Let's move on to question number four. The anterior cruciate ligament (ACL) is one of the ligaments that help stabilize the knee. Surgery is often recommended if the ACL is completely torn. That sounds terrible, and the recovery time from the surgery can be lengthy. A medical center developed a new surgical procedure designed to reduce the average recovery time from the surgery. To test the effectiveness of the new procedure, a study was conducted in which 210 patients needing surgery to repair a torn ACL were randomly assigned to receive either the standard procedure or the new procedure. So if you, you're trying to see if applying the new procedure is going to allow them to recover quicker than using the standard procedure. Let's go on to part A. Based on the design of the study, would a statistically significant result allow the medical center to conclude that the new procedure causes a reduction in recovery time compared to the standard procedure for patients similar to those in the study? Explain your answer. And the answer is yes. Because of two reasons, the first one being much more important than the second. The first one is the randomization. The randomization of the test subjects. The randomization. And what I mean by that is that the subjects are randomly assigned. Subjects are randomly assigned. Randomly assigned to either of the two treatments. Assigned to either one of the two treatments. Of the treatments. So randomization is very important when it comes to experiment for you to get statistically valid results. And the second one is the large sample size. Large sample size, in our case, we have 210. And this large sample size is going to reduce the natural variation in data. Natural variation in the results. So these two are pretty good things to have, and they are going to allow the conclusions to be statistically acceptable. I want to point something out. If you put random sample, if you put random sample, that is wrong. You will get some points taken off because we do not necessarily have a random sample. We're just testing 210 patients. Random is coming in when we are randomly assigning them to the treatment, not necessarily how we are picking them. They don't tell us anything about randomness in the problem. So in our case, we don't know if the outcome is going to generalize to every single person on earth. However, it should generalize for patients similar to those in the study. So random sampling is not necessarily occurring, but randomization is happening. Let's go on to part B. Summary statistics on the recovery times from the surgery are shown in the table. For the standard, we are given the sample size, mean recovery time in days, and standard deviation recovery time in days, and the same for the new procedure. Do the data provide convincing statistical evidence that those who receive the new procedure will have less recovery time from the surgery on average than those who receive the standard procedure for patients similar to those in the study? Before we get started, let's label the standard to be the procedure 1 and new procedure to be the procedure 2 just to make referring to them easier. So we want to test whether mean of the first one, the standard method, is greater than the mean for the second one because we want to see if the second one has less recovery time. So we want to make the first one larger than the second. So we can write the null hypothesis h naught is mu1 is equal to mu2, and h1 is going to be mu1 is greater than mu2. And you always have to check on AP statistics test whether the conditions for the test, conditions for the test to be valid are satisfied. First one, we have randomization. Randomization, that's always good. For the second one, we have sufficiently large sample size. We have large sample sizes for both of them. For the first one, our sample size is 110, which is much larger than 30. And for the second one, our sample size of 100 is much larger than 30 as well. So it's more likely that central limit theorem is going to apply. And for the last one, it is reasonable. It is reasonable that the samples are independent. It is reasonable 
that the samples are independent. Samples are independent, which we need to conduct this test. So given all of these conditions are met, which they are, we can go on and test our hypothesis. And in our case, we're using right-tailed test, and we're using t-test for the sample means of two samples. And in our case, if you're using ti-84 or 83, you can go to two sample t-test, two sample t-test in your calculator, and plug in the values, the mean of the first one, so mean of the first one is 217, standard deviation of the first one is 34, and the sample size of the first procedure is 110, and for the second procedure, we have mean of 100, standard deviation of 29, and the sample size 100. And plugging this in, you should get you should get the values as follows. T of around 27.127 and degrees of freedom of about 207.179 and our p-value, which is what you should look at, p-value is 8.358 times 10 to the negative 12, which is very, very small. And we can use alpha of 0.05, let alpha of 0.05, so we see that this is much less than the critical value of alpha. So in our case, we are going to reject. We are going to reject H0. So we reject, we reject H0, which means we have statistical evidence for H1, then mu1 is greater than mu2. So we write down that there is, there is, significant statistical evidence, significant statistical evidence, statistical evidence, that the new procedure results in less recovery time than pro standard procedure, that the new procedure results in less recovery time, in less recovery time than the standard one, than the standard one, or the standard one results in more recovery time compared to the new one. So that's the answer to part B, and we are done.